So the big news out of rugby league at the moment is the potential signing by the Sydney Roosters of Cooper Cronk, the Melbourne Storm champion halfback. Now, Will, this is a pretty strange move in my eyes. Uh, there's talk today that Mitchell Pearce is going to look for a release. Cooper Cronk's a terrific footballer, and I don't begrudge him taking a contract at all. Yep. But is the Roosters the right club? Yeah, I mean, like Cooper, had he, he kept his cards close to his chest all year, so... You know, you can't hold anything against him. You know, if the Roosters are going to... He's a 35-year-old. He's going to be 35 next year. They're going to offer him over a million bucks, is what he's, which is what he's worth, to come and play just for one year. But is it worth losing a player like Pierce or Friend, you know, for five or six years? You know, I don't understand that sort of... Uh, their mentality there, you know. I'm, I'm a bit disappointed in the Roosters. You know, a player, like, a player like Pierce, who's won a premiership, it's not like they haven't won... He's a premiership player and a halfback. He's played for New South Wales about 20 times. The only time he gets vilified is when they talk about origin. Yeah. You know, because, he, because, because you have a look at it, he's played against the best Queensland side of all time in the last 10 years. I'd, I, get me a New South Wales player who's got a winning record against Queensland in the last 10 to 15 years. Mm. There's not many. No, and, um, not many. you know, everybody hammers him and bags the crap out of him all the time about, about origin. But you have a look at his club level playing. You can't fold it. You cannot fold it. He's the top three players of the Roosters all the time. Yeah. And now for them to even think about signing Cooper Cron in front of Pierce. It's is, a massive slap in the it's, face. It's ridiculous. They're gonna, and I don't think they understand the ripple effect that this is going to have with this club. You know, Pierce is so beloved with the playing group. If, if you didn't have, you know, if Pierce didn't have a few indiscretions off the field, he's the captain of that club. Yeah. You know, he's in the leadership groups. He's doing everything like that. And the culture's built around him, Boyd Corden, Ferguson, Friend, Jared Warrior, Hargraves, all these guys, they love him so much. I'm not sure Cooper Cron can slide into that club and slide straight into that culture. Well, you, you, I mean, you, you played at the Roosters amongst every other NRL club and most of the Super League, so you, you understand what it's like to go to a new club. Now, Cooper Cronk is in a playmaking position. He's going to go there to the Roosters, who have a set structure based around what Mitchell Pearce and Luke yeah. Q did this year. Now, do the Roosters then change their whole game plan to fit in with how Cooper Cronk plays, or does he fit in well, to what they're doing? You know, this is what sounds so stupid. It's, it's, it's Friend, it's Pearce, it's Keary. You know what I mean? And now they've, got, they've brought Tedesco around the back, so they've got pretty much got the best 9-7-6-1 combination in the competition next year without a Cooper Cronk. Mm. You know, so this is what baffles me. I don't understand what, you know, what, what they think they're going to get out of Cooper for one year. Pay, you know, he's going to be 35 years old. I mean, he's just come from Melbourne Storm, which is the most successful team in the last 10 years. He's a very systematic player. And he, people know how he plays down in Melbourne. They play around him. Him and Cameron Smith is built all around them. You can't and learn Billy. that in a year. You can't learn that in a year. No. And then, no, the Roosters aren't going to change everything around it, no. around what they've built in the last six or seven years. They've been one of the most successful sides as well, just for Cooper Cronk. The, rooster, the Roosters wear a lot of shit for the fact that people talk about the salary cap. As soon as they were talking about Cooper Cronk, now I've got no issues. They've lost a lot of players. I can understand that they can fit him into the salary cap. Yeah. What they can't fit him into is that team that already has a halfback, a 5'8", a 9 and a 1. You've got a, a halfback that probably could play 6, but where yep. do you put Kiri? Yeah. So I, I just the, the whole fabric of that club is going to get torn apart, isn't it? Yeah. And there was rumours that they were going to try and flick Friend. It was like the friend, the friend or Pierce. Who they're, they're both like captain, vice-captain, you know what I mean? Yeah. So I, I don't think they realise how important them blokes are to that club. And the people around the eastern suburbs... They're, they're beloved, you know what I mean? And, and they've won premiership. So you win a premiership for a club, the fans and everything, it's going to be a massive uproar, you know what I mean? And you can't blame Cooper Cronk. It's not Cooper It's Kronk's not his fault. fault. He's no. like, he wants to play another year. The Roosters want to give him $1.2, $1.3 million. Fair enough. You can't hate on him. But I just, I'm, I'm scared the way that he's going to fit into that locker room. It's not a Melbourne Storm locker room. No. Craig Bellamy's not the coach. Cameron Smith's not there. You know, he's, it, it's well, how a, does this reflect on how does this reflect on Trent Robinson? Trent Robinson has had an amazing record with the Roosters yeah. so far. All of a sudden, now he's brought in Cooper Cronk, or I mean, has he brought in Cooper Cronk? Well, Who's making that decision? Because well, that's rough and feathers. Well, this is the thing. I mean, like Robbo will be at the coalface, but with that club, Nick Politis makes every single big move. So, and he won't face any cameras. 
No. You know, he'll just sit there and make these moves and then everyone else has got everyone else has got to so deal when with you, it. So when you signed with the Roosters in 08, who who was making was it Politis approached you then? In it those was just Politis and my manager. Yeah, right. Yeah. So the coach wasn't involved the at coach all. Coach is never involved. No. You know, so if, if Nick wants someone and he he wants Cooper Cronk and he thinks, you know, I've heard a couple of little rumors, he thinks that Cooper Cronk's gonna turn Pierce or try and, try and train Pierce into be, to be the best number seven in the world. You, you do that with JT, Andrew Johns, Cameron Smith. Well, you do it with a 23-year-old. Mitchell Pierce is 28. I mean, no, if I'm, just saying, gonna... I'm just saying, if you're going to bring a player in there for one year yeah. to try and win you a comp, it'd be either JT, Andrew Johns, Cameron Smith in their prime, mm. not 35 years old. You know, well, so they, I just don't understand. Well, bring him in in a coaching role if that's what you want. But, I mean, if you look, I guess there's a lot of talk around the Roosters from when Sonny Bill, your old yeah. teammate, got signed and how he changed the culture. You know, they all of a sudden – and there's some pretty loose units yeah. in that club. Mate, it's, not, it's not Melbourne. But, it's not Melbourne. The Roosters mm. are a different, different culture. You know, when Sonny did come in there and he – you know, the way that he trains, the way that he applies himself to the game, it's exactly the same as Cooper Cronk. Cooper Cron come down to Melbourne, not as a superstar. No, it was no, he was nowhere near the big three. The big three was G.I., Bill, and Cameron. Mm. You know what I mean? And then he, he made himself into that because yeah. he trained his ass off. And he, there's no person with a better work ethic than Cooper Cronk. And everybody can say that. You know, so, you know, with, with getting Sonny Bill at 28 in his prime to 35... There's no doubt that Cooper Cronk can, can play and do a job, but I just don't think he's going to come in there just for one year, be the magic man, and get him a premiership. Because but I, just don't, I just don't see it. As a halfback, you've got, to, you've got to take control of the team. With Sonny Bill, it's different because he can run edges. He can, you know, Sonny Bill can change the not, game with a hit. But without having to run a game himself. It's, yeah. it's, it's a very strange decision for mine. Yeah, Cooper, I mean, like, you have a look at all the times when Cooper Cronk's been playing with Melbourne. He's always the one talking yapping at half time. He's always the one doing it. Cameron Smith says what he has to say. But, you know, Cooper Cronk, he's a, he's a strong, strong character, you know, and I, I'm not sure how he's going to put himself in that locker room and force himself and tell blokes like Friendy and all these other guys that who are going to have in the back of their head, the only reason why you're here is because you flick one of my best mates. Is yeah. your mail the deal's done? My mail the deal's done, yeah. yeah. He's definitely going to be at the club. I think the Roosters just have to figure out Who's going to go? Yeah. You know, we heard rumours that Pierce wants out. Maybe Friend will want out. Maybe yeah. it could start a revolt. Yeah. That playing group's been together for about six or seven years. The main playing group, the Friend, the Pierce, the Void Corners, all these sort of blokes have won premierships together. So when you slide in there like Cooper Cronk is now, it's just the worst, worst situation for him. Was there any signings when you were at the Bulldogs? I mean, you had a pretty star-studded lineup. Then, was there any signings that came in then and upset the fabric, or did they try and buy people that would fit what you were doing? Well, you'd have to buy someone that would fit into the culture. Yeah. You know, so we, we bought Willie Tonga and he, wasn't, he was just a diamond in the rough mm. and he ended up being one of the best centres. Mm. Uh, Marco Mealy, when he was younger, he fit straight into it. Um, and every, everyone else just sort of come through the grades. There was you, no you one else. You could understand a club that's struggling going for a high profile player like that to try. Mm. But the Roosters signing him, it just makes no sense. It doesn't make any sense. I mean, like, we don't. The, the Roosters at their own fault, didn't make the grand final this year. They should have made the grand final. Mm. Melbourne and Roosters grand final, yeah. we picked it. And the Roosters just played pretty poorly. The Fords, the, and you can't blame Mitchell Pearce for that because the Fords, did, they didn't go forward. And yeah, you can't I mean, on the like, back of that. What, Napa made 50 metres and Hargraves made 80. Yeah, which, you know, as which a halfback, how are you going to play on the back of that? But everything seems to fall on poor little Pearce's shoulders. He cops him. He cops you know, it so absolutely. I feel sorry for him all the time. If he if he ends up leaving, it's going to be one of the biggest shames. You know, he was on road to playing the most most cap roosters player ever. You know, I think they would have got another premiership in the next three or for four sure. years, regardless of Cronk. So um, it's a bit of a shame if if all this seems to happen in the yeah. next couple of days. So well, I mean, at the end of the day, Cooper Cronk could be an enormous signing we've got to go in our face, or he could be the worst signing since W Mason in two thousand and eight. <laughs> <laughs>